Ladies and gentlemen, this week on The Peas, I will learn how to pronounce Nepo Baby. And also, I've asked my special guest, Brad, to come out of the glass room that I keep him in and watch him every night to talk about this movie with me, The Watchers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a brand new episode of Two Peas on a Podcast, where we review the latest and sometimes greatest movies every week. And sometimes the watchers <laughs> talking to <laughs> Brad this week, old man Brad, special guest of mine, filling in for Nick this week. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? And we, we watched the 1988 Watchers with Corey Haim and Michael Ironside, right? That's what we're doing. <laughs> Let me pivot. Let's see if I can remember that movie. Uh, that's not the one I watched. Wow, this is going to oh, be a shit. fucked up review. Yeah, this um, is. I'm I'm off now. I don't even know what to say. Nothing's going to make sense. I don't even think Dakota there's, Fanning there's was There's a stray dog, yet. a genetically enhanced creature chasing this dog. That works. <laughs> Michael Ironside's in that. it. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be good. Not that one. All right. Okay. So, so Ishana Knight Shyamalan, obviously M. Knight Shyamalan's daughter, in her first film, her directorial debut, The Watchers, which is based on an A.M. Shine novel that is very popular that I was not familiar with so I didn't know the story I didn't read anything about the story I wanted to kind of experience this in real time so I didn't know anything I, going into it I had no idea it was based on a book until the credits rolled and I was like uh, wait okay. this was based on a book okay so I even yeah, have I, more thoughts for you here okay and I had right, no nothing right. about the book so we will get into it the main review this week is the watchers Brad old man Brad that's me you haven't you haven't podcasted oh, in a couple weeks. I haven't. I'm but you're slacking. here. Because I'm old. Some, sometimes it takes a little while to get to the basement. I mean, you, you asked me two weeks ago, and I just got to the basement. So It does. Yeah. No, I'm with you, brother. I, Knees are creaking. Things hurt that I didn't even know I had, buddy. So <laughs> I 100% understand where you're coming from. And we share that uh, affliction. So, All right. So before we get into the review of The Watchers, we're going to talk about this one tonight. We like to start out every review. With what we call one big question. One big ass question. A big one. All right. So I asked you to do a, a teeny eensy bit of homework tonight and pull up our Discord chat because you are graciously a patron of the show. So you have access over there. What uh, question did you want to pick out there for us to answer that the fans threw at us this week? Hmm. And then I'll grab one too. All right, I think I think I might I think I might uh, I might have one. Do it. Go for it. So our good friend, you know Julio from the Contrarians, mm, my guy. He uh, he's a Contrarian. I, I feel like me, but I'm not because I generally like bad movies. Um, you do. You do. <laughs> I'm a Contrarian in a different way. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with you on that. <laughs> Would you care about this movie's release? If it wasn't a Shyam Shyamalan connection. Hmm. Yes, but that's also not fair. I think you're probably biased too, but all horror really interests me. Anything in that realm kind of. It's true. I'll give a shot to. I will say, however, being Shyamalan's daughter and being his kid. Mm -hmm. definitely made it much more urgent for me to see it. Like I went it, to see it, it in the theater opening weekend and I didn't really want to, I kind of wanted to see what it was before people started chatting about it because of the name. I think, I mean, I went to see this a few hours ago, so yeah. it really got me to rush right out. No, just kidding. Uh, it watching, <laughs> I'm the watching trailer, it right now. <laughs> I'm watching it as we speak. I put I'm it reading on. The yeah, notes. yeah. Yeah, sure. The trailer had me, my interest peaked, but yeah. then finding out it was his daughter, it, I mean, it it did raise it a little bit, yeah. thinking, okay, is she going to be, you know, similar to her father as, you know, structure of a movie? Is there going to be the twist in the film? What, you know, things that we know right. from him, his movies, right. Right. or is she going to really kind of push and be her own? So yeah, it did it, it did a little bit push it for me to go see it a little more. I think if that name wasn't attached, there could have been a, a possibility of like, eh, I'll wait till it's streaming. 
I will say, I and this this might come up in the review too, but I will say that seeing this film, I do see the Shyamalama Ding Dong esque traits that obviously oh, came down from her father. Huge, yes. But but I did want to say too that I do feel like there was some originality there, and like the way it was shot, and the different angles and camera pans, and we'll talk about it there during was. the review. But I do yeah. feel like she tried to be her own. Yeah, thematically very similar, kind of eerie suspense same, plot twist. Yeah, yeah. Kind same, of deal, but, same, but a little but different. Looked a little bit different, I guess, is really what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got a good one here that I haven't thought of, so I'm going to need you to come up with an answer. You okay? got a good and juicy I, one? It's a juicy question. Uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes fun when you can just kind of give answers off the top of your head, too. But our, our good <laughs> friend, it? Lindsay Dunn, who uh, ironically is going to be a guest for me next week. We're going to be talking about the new Inside Out film. But Lindsay says, if you could trap four people in a room and watch them behind glass doing normal things, who would you choose? And I'm going to go ahead and say alive or dead. She didn't say that. So I'll say alive or dead. If four you could people. Trap four, four people in a room and watch them behind glass. Just living their everyday lives. Just doing normal shit. Mm. Now, see. Now, now, see, I could get you. Creepy Gerald could come out for this, all right? Because it, it, I could get four <laughs> hotties in there. You know what I'm saying? Scar Joe, Ana de Armas. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's Gerald's Taylor, queen cave. You know? Get ready, everybody. Exactly. It's my queen. He's going to fill room. that with Nepo babies. <laughs> thank god you know how to say that apparently i said it wrong last week and i've heard nothing else um any ideas or just, if, just who would i mean you know i'm thinking uh and it's tough i'm like do i want to just put like friends or people i know do i want to go like famous people like you know what i want to do creeper that way you know what i want to do and then i'm gonna let you think okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick four musicians that mm. did not collaborate with each other. I, at least I don't think they did in a room together because I feel like part of the watching would be them collaborating and playing tunes together. Like, let's say there's instruments in the room. Hopefully let's pretend like there's a guitar in there. And like whatever. <laughs> you're just, you're adding to the question. So, I mean, so I'll I, say, I already so I have say, a, a musician in my head that I would put, but I'm like, do I do him with others or with, yeah, go ahead. So I got to say Taylor Swift just because I'm me and I have to, uh, <laughs> I'll also put, I'll also put, but I think she's a great songwriter too, which is why I put her in there. Uh, Elvis Presley more. I mean, one of the all time greats, uh, I'll put somebody like, opinion. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I think it's a pretty popular opinion. <laughs> I'll put uh, who's another great songwriter. I'll put like Bob Dylan in there, you know, Bob Dylan. Okay. And then like, and then like probably one of the best guitarists I can think of, uh, like Eddie Van Halen. So we will just have Eddie Van Halen, Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, and Taylor Swift. There you mm. go. What kind of music would you get out of that? And at some point, they've got to collaborate. They got to come up with something. It well, I mean, they're stuck like, in a room together. Yeah. You'd, th you'd think something would have to come out of that, right? Yeah, shake it off, baby. The uh, folk style version. I don't know. What do you What do you got? What do you want? What do you, who do you got in there? What do you Who are you creeping on? Yeah, like I said, this is tough because. Well, Dan can take all this out. He's an editing genius. That guy. <laughs> <clears throat> he makes me sound like. Well, I mean, right off the everybody. bat, immediately I went to a musician myself, but I don't know if I want to put him with other creators or other musicians, and that's Trent Reznor. I oh, would absolutely yeah. would just love to see him like good one work some magic and do his thing dude put him in there with johnny cash though because do that i i mean that would be amazing yes absolutely great yeah yeah um maybe put him in there with someone like uh you know i feel like they've worked together at, at some point but the edge you, you're talking guitar players okay yeah sure and and I think they could come up with some something, something cool. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I'm gonna really I'm like... gonna throw my I'm gonna throw my creeper piece in there for oh, you, please. Gerald. Yes. We gotta put May Kelly in that in this room. Ooh, because Kelly. you know Tell the folks this the two B version is... of Margot Robbie, right? Or whatever. <laughs> Who is she? She's one of the greatest uh B movie actresses of our time right now, currently. But she did like get... 30 movies last year. 
and then I thought you were gonna get really weird to put like no. Martha Stewart in there or something and, like just <laughs> like what oh no That'd we gotta put though. bacon cookies gotta, you know what I'm gonna shake I'm gonna like you would say shake it off but I'm gonna shake it up and we're going to put um Gordon Ramsay in there to keep Ooh, them okay. all in check so who do because we have? Because I want to see the chaotic bullshit that's going to come out of this room. Oh, that show. That would be a fucking reality show right there. So what do we got? We got Gordon Ramsay, May Gordon Kelly. Ramsay. Who else? Yeah, May Reznor, Kelly, The else? Edge, and, and uh, Trent okay. Reznor. Okay. There you go. A couple so musicians. So Trent and The Edge will be trying to make music while yeah. Gordon's yelling at them and cooking. And May yeah. Kelly's just like chilling. Maybe she's in the music. She's going to make some music too. She's going to help Gordon Handing cook. Out her headshots you know, everybody. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right well there you go i don't even remember my four at this point we'll have to listen back and <laughs> see who i picked but there you go did, thank uh, you go ahead you did taylor elvis um bob, bob, dylan, bob dylan and uh eddie van hill there you go that's it yeah so uh i don't I think we did pretty good there on the fly though you know so yeah. thank you Lindsay. thank you julio thank you everyone else for the questions you submitted this week guys if you want to get involved check the show notes and join up to the Facebook fan page or the Discord chat, and you can submit questions to us, and we will answer every week for one big question. Now, Brad, old man Brad, yes. my dear, yes. dear friend. We go back a long way. We've podcasted together many, many times. I don't actually know how yeah. many, but probably at least yeah. 10 or so, I would think. Maybe uh, more. Counting life and live stream. Live stream, live stream for the together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. It's uh, enough already is basically what I'm saying. It's going to be the end. <laughs> But tonight we're doing it again, and we're talking about The Watchers from Ashana Night Shyamalan. And to start out every review, we give our scores out of 10 to each other, and we have not discussed it yet. We do nope, not know I what haven't said a word. Film. So we're going to give our scores out of 10, and then we will talk about how we arrived at that score and what we call the early score reveal. Oh. It's not a 10. It's out of 10. Out of and 10. You, can't, All right. you want me to count us in, or you want to count us in? What do you sure, want count us in. Count us in. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right. So I have. What the fuck? Oh. First half of the movie is a seven. Uh, Second half of the movie is a one. Sure. So overall, it's a four. All right. You don't have to grade it like that. It's really confusing. All right. We'll we'll, we'll talk about. We'll talk about how you landed on a four (laughs) when we get there. Four. Four out of ten. A four out of ten from Brad and a six out of ten from me, which makes it a five out of ten cumulatively this week from the peas. The Watchers, obviously a bit of a letdown, sitting at a 5 out of 10 overall. I liked it a little bit more than you did. We will keep it spoiler-free here for a few minutes. Brad, I will. you're the guest. I will let you take the floor on your general well, thoughts here on The Watchers. Like my complicated mathematical uh, rating system I have here. Yeah, that's, said, that's too much. I mean, I, you pulled it, out like a spreadsheet with like a bar graph. And I mean, I can't. Just give, it, <laughs> just, give it, just give it to me, man. What do you got? It started out great like i was all into this creepy story and who are these watchers what's this room what's going on and blah we'll we'll dig more into all of this when we go spoilers and i loved it i was all in and then there was a moment it took a turn yeah and boy did the wheels fall off this thing fast and it just Talk about it didn't stick the landing. It didn't stick the third act. Let's just say that. It just, I don't, and it, I don't even know. I'm so like out of words with spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, seeing this based off of a book, it really makes me curious of like, now, now see, I didn't, how much this review, I, I, I specifically did not read the synopsis of the book because I did read that a lot of stuff was changed, especially the ending and stuff like that. Okay. So I didn't read yet. I plan to, but I didn't read yet what the original <laughs> was going to be because I feel like that may have even made it a worse score for me. So I'm kind of eye to eye with you. I think maybe I was a little more forgiving of the last third or so of the movie because I agree with you that, that was when it kind of lost lost me. It, it did. Uh, that we'll final get into act why. of the film. Yeah, for sure, without giving away anything up top. But I'm with you. I mean, the first 65, 70% of this movie, I was in love with it. Like, I thought oh, it yeah, was a very absolutely. creepy, atmospheric, and minimalistic. I yes. have used that term before for different movies like The Witch. It comes to mind. And you know, even Blair Witch Project, these movies that are in the woods, that are set in the woods, 
and it's just inherently creepy, right? Like you don't even have to oh, yeah. fucking do anything. And like, it's creepy, and there. they give you just enough to where you're like squinting your eyes to be like, okay, can I yeah. see something in the shadows? Right. I don't know. Is there something there? Right. And it just so drew, I really drew you in. I really love the atmosphere that this movie created and gave me in the in, in the first two thirds of the movie, but for some reason. And we'll talk about it more in spoilers, but for some reason there there comes a point, and I, I don't want to give it away now, but there comes a point in the movie where something happens and the characters are in a different location and different shit's going on, and it just kind of turns into a different movie. And it's just over exposition and over explaining, and it just seemed less scary. I mean, yeah, I don't what? know how else to put it. Once they took it out of that like forest ambiguous setting, it wasn't as enjoyable for me. You know, and I think we'll, that's we'll get into those uh, exposition dumps for sure. But I mean, I was riding <laughs> like because, you know, I had seen some bad reviews of this thing and I, I know it doesn't have a good Rotten Tomato score when I went in to see it. Yeah. And I'm watching it an hour into the movie and I'm going, what, what are these people talking about? This is I was the great. same way. I was like, yeah, I was like, this, this is great. And then it just kind of like you said, just kind of goes off the rails. And, um, and it's then you're unfortunate like, oh, because, oh, I see what yeah. people why what yeah, happened I see here why, how you can kind of like <laughs> just kind of lose your way um in telling the story and i mean i don't know maybe her back was against the wall she didn't know what to do and um but we'll talk about it so let's get into spoilers for the watchers guys we're gonna take a quick promo break it is your spoiler warning by the way when we come back we will be into full spoilers for the watchers with old man brad stick around we will be right back spoiler warning uh, i'm gonna get a beer You drink, Beer. What are you doing? I'm drinking water. Wow. <laughs> Need to refill my beer cooler, man. Get low in there. Ah. All right. Let me pour this sucker and then we'll come back in here, Bradley. The Watchers. Ooh, ooh, doggy. All right. <clears throat> All right, coming back in here in five, four, three, two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Gerald here with you. And of course, on the other side, my special guest this week, filling in for Nick. Where's Nick, by the way, Brad? Have you seen him? Is he out in the I wild or I don't know? Is maybe maybe he's in uh in uh mirrored room somewhere in the forest you know what it was i don't know you know what it was he saw the watchers on the schedule and he's like you know what i'm taking a fucking eye and taking a break <laughs> he, he saw the, the what's coming up yeah. and he's like oh yeah, shit, yeah, I yeah. Gotta, well he hasn't missed much yet i actually gave hitman a six as well last week so i haven't been blown away by a lot of stuff i've seen as of <laughs> late but it was a six for me it was a it was a four four for Brad. yikes so going forward, guys, anything we talk about, the Watchers will be spoiler filled. We will be talking full willy nilly about this movie from Ishana Knight Shyamalan, starring Dakota Fanning. By the way, we haven't really talked about the performances yet. Brad, did you want to elaborate at all? Spoilery. You can say anything you want to say. Different scenes. Kind of what what took it off the rails for you? Because it sounds like me and you were in the same boat. You know, at least halfway through this movie, where we were kind of digging it. Yeah, we, I was. And then we weren't. <laughs> and and even when it started to take the turn and we, I, I mean, we're in spoilers now. So yep. as soon as we got to the fairy side of things, I was like, yeah. interesting, interesting little like spin. Okay, where's this going to go? But then it was like, they had to rush to get this together. And it was just exposition dumps like. They're trying to get out of this area. You know, they're rushing to the forest to get to the boat after they found these videos. Yeah. And then they stop at this weird seal. Where the fuck did this come from? Nah, and no. Like this big, like two minute speech about, oh, it's this and blah, blah, blah about these yep. fairies and how they used to live with humans. And now they're locked underground. And I'm like, okay, you're supposed to be rushing out of this before it gets dark. And you get another one at the end when, well, first she goes to the school. I, I guess we should just like dive back, but you know, this is where it lost it for me. That's what we're going to say right now. 
yeah. it's just the expedition dumps where it goes to university you get the recording which is fine it gives you a little more of the story but then the very very end where she is telling this fairy that she's a halfling and she not knowing it not believing it and of she's changing and like ah, no blah and I'm like what the fuck is going on yeah this movie so, started so strong so I strong i didn't look at the imdb one but here's the letterbox synopsis and that and then i want to ask you a question so it says when 28 year old mina finds shelter after getting stranded in an expensive untouched or, i'm sorry expansive untouched forest in western ireland she unknowingly becomes trapped alongside three strangers that are watched and stalked by mysterious creatures every night. Yeah. Now, that, that's let me what the ask first you. Half gave you, and it was exactly great. Now, let me ask you a couple of different questions to branch off of what you said because I agree with you one hundred percent that once we find out the origin of these creatures, yeah, and all the kind of quote unquote facts surrounding them is when it just wasn't scary anymore. Like it was like, it was almost like she was rushing to explain what we had seen, mm -hmm. but I don't really think you need to do that. Now with that, that synopsis has just read you, would this movie have worked better for you if you never found out what the creatures were or would you need some type of closure there? No, I wouldn't need closure if they if it would have stayed, you know, like them eventually getting out of the forest, you know, with the bad CGI piece where they're all standing there changing to the guy. And you went to the house later and there was the weird thing that you find out that uh, Madeline is a halfling or something I of that, that sort without yeah. the exposition or anything like that if you just found out and just kind of ended it very kind of dark and open and, and everything maybe it would have been better like i said the fairy stuff was fine it was fine but it felt but really what, rushed in it was over you know beaten into our heads though yes. in that last half hour but what oh, yes. i was what i'm alluding to there is like a lot of my favorite kind of I don't know it's necessarily no horror is the right word, which was a question that also got thrown to us too, is that you would, would you consider this a horror movie or something else? Um, but a lot of my it's favorite fantasy like horror. Yeah, yeah. A lot of my favorite like mystery kind of like thrillers are ambiguous. Like they don't yeah. you don't have to exp like it's scarier for me as a viewer or as a reader if I'm reading the book, it's scarier for me to not know. Like that's yes. frightening as shit. And then if it you know, if it succeeds and you do a sequel or you write a series of books and you want to start introducing the origin and explaining shit, that's fine. I mean, you know, franchises do that all the time. I mean, Halloween's one. I mean, you know, Michael Myers in the first movie, we have no fucking idea what this guy's problem is. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, like, he's just fucking, you know, the psycho <laughs> that puts a mask on and stalks his chick, you know? I mean, we don't know. So that makes it scarier for me, and I, I wish that it had been a little less, like, information dump in this movie and a little more... Mm -hmm like atmosphere that we got and a little more well, of that kind of minimal, like kind of not pulling the sheets all the way back, you know, like keeping us a little on edge as to what is this? You know what I mean? And I also want to say real quick to your point too, I really liked, and I thought it was a great plot piece, a setup to use the sign or the, the professor's videotapes. I thought that was great. No, it, I really it, like that more of the fairy story was wound into that. Like there's Bam. a seal yep. in this forest Nailed that it. has yep. this, if there's, you know, other kind of things, maybe you yep. wouldn't have had to dump it all right there. And, the I, um, and I also wanted to ask you too, Madeline, the, you know, older lady that yeah. we end up finding mm -hmm. out is, is a halfling and she's kind of the enemy of it, the, the, and she's, the story. She's mimicking this professor's dead wife, which I have a right. question about that. <laughs> I saw that coming from a mile away. Did you or your wife see that coming? That it was her? Yeah. I, I knew we, she was going to be a bad guy. Well, we thought it was the the kid, the boy, because he talked about living forever. 
that he figured out to like kind of start over as a younger man. That's what we thought, but I could see that too. I I I think the re- <laughs> which is going to be a problem for her as a filmmaker, but I think the reason I saw that coming because it was Shyamalan. And I said, well, there's going to be some kind of fucking plot twist. Oh, yeah, there's got to be a twist. There's some crazy shit going on with somebody here. And I yeah. even thought for a moment it might be Elle Fanning for a moment. I'm like, is it Mina? Like, what the fuck's going on here? The way they're they're really pushing the the twin sister and her mom died and everything else of like, yep. yeah, you did think that. Is she really her? Is she, are right. we really here? There was that thought of like, okay, this weird forest and it, it, because when she's listening to the message of her sister, I'm like, well, that's her voice before you right. found out she was a twin. Right. And you're like, okay, is she, is there something else weird going on of like a purgatory or they're dead kind of thing? Because Sh- Shyamalan, you're thinking, okay, there's got to be some some twist. What's the twist? That's what I was thinking of the whole time. Another thing that is prominent in Shyamalan's catalog. In fact, I think he's done, and I'm talking about M. Night, I think he's done it in every movie. But, I mean, I think to movies like Signs and The Sixth Sense, where he'll do flashbacks to the Trump traumatic event. Mm-hmm. You know, he'll do flashbacks to what happened to kind of get us to where the character is. You know, in Signs, when the wife is in that horrible car accident and her body's basically severed in half and it keeps flashing back to it until we eventually find out what the tie-in is at the end. Yeah. And then, of course, and of course, in, in Sixth Sense, it could be argued that is one of the greatest plot twists of all time, and we find out how those flashbacks to him and his wife are arguing uh, and the loneliness kind of tie in. Mm-hmm. So here, I thought it was really captivating, and honestly, like, because I, I have a daughter, and not only that, she wants to be in film, so I think about, like, how proud M Knight must be because she literally copy paste that kind of systematic yeah. formula that he does with Mina and her sister's kind of tragedy with her mom. And they'll show like five, 10 seconds of like this horrible accident. You don't really know what happened there. Who is this? What's going on? How does this tie in? And then, like you said, we kind of find out at the end that, you know, she blames herself for her mother's death and they were twins and, and all that. So I thought, That's another thing that was really positive for this movie for me is that I loved how the M night influence just like bled through this movie and the filmmaking. You could could see, especially the way she did close ups because he he shoots a close up a certain way, and it just you could just you could just feel that in a lot of it but she she did do her own little thing the one thing i loved was the beginning the first part when we're um getting to know kind of following along dakota fanning's character and everybody's like blurred out you don't see anybody's faces they're either turned or blurred like her co-workers blurred out it's just the focus is only on her and then how she's She's basically the mimic in herself where she's like, I'm, I'm dressing up as somebody else when I'm going out to try to like, I'm not me. I'm, I'm something else. And that kind of, I, I did like how that kind of tied into how these changeling fairies kind of worked in a way, yeah. but it just, yeah. And are they fairies I mean, look, or are they vampires? Because why can't they come out during the day and they burn? I don't yeah, get it. I mean, look, it, it's it's a great premise. The problem is, is that it's so convoluted in like its backstory and yes. the explanation of who these watchers are that you can't pack it into 102 minutes. I mean, this is 100 minutes with the credits. So, I mean, you can't, in my opinion, you can't pack all that into an hour and a half. No. I, now, if you're I'm, if you're reading the book, that's one thing. You can keep writing and you can keep reading and. You know, the books. I'm curious how the book, how early you either find out or how much is explained as you go along. If it's, you know, we're going to throw it. This is like the book throwing it all into the last three chapters and going, wait a second. Exactly. We just wait a minute. They're fairies. What the fuck (laughs) fuck is this? Now, my question is the professor's wife madeline she died in 2001 he says he started this uh 
you know bunker that he built and he he came down there in 2009 i think he said how you know he captured one of these fairies how does this fairy one know what she looks like i i guess he could have some pictures but start to act like her and start to mimic her when she's been dead for about eight years they don't they don't tell us i i assume i re- actually didn't really think about it but as you're asking me i assume like he maybe he had home videos of their wedding and their time to i mean i who knows he showed maybe. her footage of of because he said there was one line and and i think maybe it was the cassette tape that he said i think or maybe it was one of the video recordings that they were watching mm-hmm. but he mentioned how you know, he had kind of created this creature and became so fond of it, and he had to go say goodbye to it. Yeah. So I feel Shoot like he'd heart. been, I feel like he'd been training it or teaching it, whether that was with videos or pictures of his wife or, or whatever. I, you know, I don't know why those videos would not have been there uh, in the room, or unless Madeline destroyed him for some reason. But maybe they were down there with the bike and shit too. I mean, that, I mean, again, they didn't explain this to us. I'm just no. saying you could explain that if you wanted to. Like, well, I in feel like all mind. the the stuff down in the like burrows was all the people that basically were just lost in that forest because people disappeared in that forest. People, you know, these watchers would take people and mimic other people trying to get out. And I don't know why, what took them so long to figure out, at least for her, of, you know, why don't you use your night times or whatever and try to find a way. Also, why did, why did Madeline as a halfling who had obviously been extremely successful in portraying a human, why did she stay there for like multiple years as a prisoner if she knew you know what I mean? Like she could get out because she was one of them, you know, one of the enemy. So I, I don't know. It just, it didn't, that didn't add up for me either. Like you stayed here just to torture whatever humans came along. I mean, it was just strange. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Also, where was Tinkerbell? I mean, it's crazy. We're talking <laughs> about fairies. I mean, she wasn't even in it. Uh, I think if they had left alone the, overindulgent explaining of the fairy concept and stuff that this movie would have worked a lot better for me. I love the atmosphere of this movie. The forest is inherently scary and it's one of the oh, scariest yeah. things to, to me personally. Like it's just creepy. There's all kinds of noises. You don't know what they are and like leaves rustling and you know, shit like that. And like, you don't need to add a lot of quote unquote horror things to the forest. I mean, it's just scary. You know, it's just like, Alone at night in the woods is scary, regardless of who you are. Or and the it's creatures scary. were scary. Like, and in the were. shadows, they were scary, the way they kind of crawled. But then when they stopped and they stood up and they were, like, skinny, lanky, and really tall, I'm yeah. like, that's cool. Yeah. But I, how does this creature not know they were a halfling, too? Like, they could go out in the daytime. They they knew they could right. shapeshift. Why was it a shock to them to be like, what? I'm half human? Oh. Right. And, all, and you know, that's the thing, too, that kind of hurt this movie. And I don't know if the, if the book is like this or not. But it, it, like, it chose to, like, over-explain things it didn't need to. And it didn't explain other things that we are sitting here asking questions about, you know? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And I feel like maybe some stuff was left out in the storytelling and the script for the movie. And that's unfortunate because I love the way it looked. And like I said, it was creepy. The first two thirds of the movie, I was on board. Like it just yeah. went off the rails. Like it just started oh. just like spitting out like all this information, all this shit. And and then that final climax of Georgina Campbell's character, who we knew from Barbarian a couple of years ago. She's a great actress and she shows up at her house. And I was like thinking to myself the whole time, I'm like, turn some fucking lights on like why, why, are y'all in <laughs> why are y'all at her house with literally all the lights off and this like creepy shit that you just went through in, the, in this traumatic experience uh but anyway it, banging on the door in the middle of the night like yeah yeah it's like you don't have any fucking porch lights or anything what are you doing <laughs> turn your tv on put on fucking espn or something this is crazy um 
What about the performances, Brad? What do you think about, you know, the story is one thing and kind of it losing its way, which I think we both kind of agree there. Dakota Fanning, obviously, is the, is the central focus of the movie. I love her. I love both of the Fanning sisters. I've always been on board all the way back to Man on Fire with Denzel when she was like 12 years old in that. I've been following her career. I think she's a great actress. And I thought she did really well in this. Um, I don't really have any negative things about the performances in the movie. What do you think? I, I think everybody in this movie was great. The the kid, I feel like he, I've seen him in other things and he's kind of, I feel like he's the same character every time I've seen him, but he didn't do a bad job. Uh, you know, nobody, I don't think anybody in this film was like, oh my God, their acting is terrible or they, they really aren't bringing it here. I, I felt like everybody gave it their all and was, was all in. So I had, I had no issues with the acting at all. So the young dude in the movie, Oliver Finnegan is an Irish actor. And I think this was his first movie, at least according to letter. Oh, really? He's a newcomer. Okay. So he just kind of has a look like I've, I've seen him in things before. He does. Cause in fact, when you funny that you say that, cause when I saw him, I was like, I think he was in midsummer. <laughs> and I yeah. went back and looked, and I'm like, never mind. He's never been anything. <laughs> um, and then, I, of course, I know so Georgina Campbell from Barbarian and King Arthur and some other stuff that she's been in. She's great. But, yeah, Dakota Fanning, I thought, did really well here at carrying this material. What did you think of the bird? Were you into the bird at all? you think that was cool or not? I mean, it was fine. It, it, the it mimicking. It, it played with the mimicking storyline where it they did. would repeat, you know. Yeah. Don't die. Don't die. Like, yeah, it was a little heavy-handed in that respect, but I thought it was Well, cute... and then when you find out that the the halfling is still alive when she's finally like reconciled and like hanging out with her sister and the kid comes in with like, "Oh, look, I drew you a picture with you and Darwin." And at first I was like, "Wait a second. How do you know that she has a bird? She's just, like shown up in your life for the first time, but then the bird flew to the window." And I was like, "Oh." <laughs> okay, that makes sense then, at least. <laughs> Um, Instead, she's a little redheaded girl running around the city following you. So, Ishana Knight Shyamalan, what do you think uh, from a filmmaking perspective? I know you were let down with this movie, but where I was. Let me before you answer. Let me ask you this about M Knight first of all, because this guy has, and this isn't just me speaking, but I mean, this guy has gained a reputation of kind of being like. A movie of his comes out, it could be a 10, it could be a 2. I mean, we don't fucking know what we're going to get. It's absolutely true. It's a roller coaster bell curve of a resume. You know, generally speaking, there's been a couple duds that I've just kind of like laughably, like these are so stupid. But I mean, for the most part, the guy is knows what he's doing. He's a great filmmaker. He's a great storyteller. Does the script always serve him best? Maybe not. No. Uh, but I feel like he generally does the best he can do with it. But with that and being said, he, what do you think about her career going forward? And I think he's set up his career that everybody expects a twist, which yeah. he should just, he needs to come out and just like, you know, I'm making a straight movie, not something like Airbender or anything. Like make something original that has no twists just to throw people. Yeah. Like, and I saw that. that twist. I saw that trailer for his new movie that comes out next month called Trap. And. What a great concept. But, you know, you see all of his trailers and you think that. Yeah. Like, you think, oh, You're that's like, oh, a fucking what's the killer gonna be? concept. Yeah. Like, that's going to be so fucking cool. <laughs> and then you watch it and either it is or it isn't, you know. And yeah, I remember seeing the trailer to Old, which I'm not a fan of, that came out a few years ago from him. But I remember seeing that trailer going, wow, this is a fucking great concept. Basically, like a Benjamin Button type mm-hmm. deal, but it's in horror, you know. And it just and, didn't work for me at the end of the day. But the landing at all on that one. But yeah, yeah. I think it, she has the craft. She definitely has the craft. I mean, that first half to three quarters of the movie sets up that she she's she knows what she's doing. She knows how to craft a film. She knows how to to do an atmosphere and creepiness and and other said things. It's just I don't think the either the script or what it was just let her down on that that last part. So yeah, I don't. I'm I don't not. I'm not going to falter her next movie. I'm going to be like, oh well, the Watchers really sucked at the end. I'm not going to go see this. I'm, I won't. I'll I'll see what yeah. she has. Give her yeah, a I'll few movies under her belt, and we'll see. 
I'll be there. I thought this was a valiant effort for a debut. I really did. I thought the movie was beautifully shot. I mean, it looked yeah. great. It, re it really did, especially the stuff in the woods, like you said, with the dimly lit, just kind of ambiance that she created in the movie and the performances. She got great performances from the majority of the actors here. I thought it was a really well-made movie, especially for a first-time director. I just think the last act of the film really hurt the overall enjoyment it just really dropped it off of a cliff at the end of the movie i mean oh yeah it i was just like what the fuck because it was one of those things that was jarring for me because i loved it and then i and I, it's like 20 30 minutes at the end and i remember leaving or sitting there during the credits and i'm like what what i thought i loved it what what happened <laughs> like, I, don't, I feel like it just really quickly like changed did, paths you know did and it was someone like, else film the last part of this movie to what yeah who wrote yeah. this script? What? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think maybe I was just a little more forgiving of it in my score because I know she's a first-time filmmaker. I know it's got the Shyamalan kind of tag on it. So people are expecting some kind of amazing ending. And, like, if you don't you get had that, some time it's a letdown. To, you had some time to soak it in. You know, I've had an hour. Yeah. So That's true. It, it, you That's know. true. <laughs> well, anyway... Uh, it was a six for me, which is not great. I gave Hitman a six last week, so I'm on a bit of a losing streak here. And it was a four from Brad, which puts four. us at five. Which, overall, which I'm not saying. If you if you know the stuff that I watch and I score, a four isn't necessarily a death kill. I would say go watch the movie and then shut it off about seventy oh, minutes man. in. <laughs> Brad loves Brad loves movies that are a four out of a hundred. So <laughs> if he's giving it a four out of a ten, it's probably pretty fucking good. Um, but no, uh, Brad, old man, Brad, old my friend. Anything else you want to say on the watchers? You good? I'm sorry, no, I to cut you off. no, I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> Thank you. At least it was better us. than sixty five. Let's just say that. Oh, oh god, oh god, man, sixty five, such a good movie. Thanks for reminding me of that. I might go rewatch that tonight. Mm. Um. Old man Brad is here. Brad, thank you so much for going out to see this movie last minute. We've talked about it a couple times already, but you just literally just left the theater and came here to record for me. No, oh, I tried to so. I tried to pivot to bad boys ride or die people, but Joe was you like, did, no. You gave me a twelve no. hour notice. I couldn't really <laughs> I couldn't really make that happen. Uh, I do want to see that though, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll have to wait for streaming to see it, but I am excited to see that. And if you want to come on and cover it with me, let's do it, man. I'm I'm into it. All right. You're welcome to come back anytime and Oh Help yeah, me, I always uh, enjoy talking to you, man. Review these flicks, but tell uh, tell the folks where they can find you out there, man. You, I know you've taken a mini break here, but you are obviously around. You're doing stuff. So where can they find your show? What's it all about? Uh, just, you can just search for Old Man Brad on any of your podcast apps. It's a it's a horror podcast. I majority of what I cover are indie horror. I do cover some of the mainstream too, but it's everything from you know, deep into the Tubi era with Tales from Tubi to, you know, current horror movies and beyond. I talk to filmmakers and just have fun doing it. Have guests on like Gerald's been on a few episodes. and Yeah, man. Yeah, we just have a blast. Uh, Chris Andy said, would this have been a Tubi original if it were not for nepotism? <laughs> <laughs> that that last part there. could have been a Tubi original. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Two be uh, two be originals have gotten it, within the past six months have really kind of stepped yeah. up their game. I know, I know that's not saying a lot for for you know the things I watch though, but it, they have. Um, yeah, just look for old man Brad. I'm out there. I'm everywhere. So uh, to wrap up, our buddy David Powell over there says, "What was the last good movie with the name Shyamalan in the credits?" Split. Knock at the cabin. Knock at the cabin. I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen that what'd one. You, what'd you say? Split. I didn't really like Split. Or did I? Split. Which one was the one? Oh, I didn't like Glass. Split yeah, was Glass. Okay. Glass sucked. Split was the one where you, when you got to the end, you was like, oh, oh, shit. It's what? And then they gave oh, us Glass, split. and you're like, oh, well, this sucked. Which one's the one where, like, he died in a mud puddle? Uh, glass. <laughs> Glass. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't really, I didn't really like the climax of that one. Uh, but for me, it would be Knock at the Cabin, David. I thought Knock at the Cabin was pretty good. It was actually one of my okay. favorite movies of 2023. I think it was in like my top 20 or so. And that's that that's year. one I haven't watched. I still had the bad taste of old in my mouth, so I was like, ah, I'm not yeah. ready to dive into Knock at the Cabin yet. 
Yeah, I get it. All right, guys, next week we will be talking about Inside Out 2. I will have another special guest along, my friend Lindsay Dunn. I love that lady, and she'll be joining me next week to talk about the new Disney Pixar film, Inside Out 2. I'm looking forward to that. And then, uh, I don't know, we got a lot. Of, we got a string of horror movies coming along. We got Maxine coming up. We got Long Legs coming up. So I don't know. Nick may never come back. <laughs> we got we got quiet <laughs> quiet place day one. Quiet place up. parts yeah. or, or day one. Yeah, I, I may never see the guy again. I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of horror, so we'll see. But uh, in the meantime, I'll keep churning them out as long as I have guests to join me, friends to join me. I appreciate it. Friends like Brad, Brad, thank you so much for being here, brother. Make sure you check the Anytime. show notes so you can look Brad up online and hit hit up his podcast as well. Until next week, we talk about Inside Out and all the emotions that are running around in our head. But until then, Brad, right now, the only emotion I'm feeling is love, brother, because I can see you on the other side of the camera. So, It's, it's always, maybe always it's a lust. great time. <laughs> maybe it's lust. I'm not sure. <laughs> all right, man. I love you. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right, bye.